Hey guys! I decided to introduce a new series, 100 Seconds Muscle Science. In this series, I will explain you just in about 100 seconds really interesting findings about building muscle, gaining strength and losing fat, which will help you to achieve your goals. I think the best thing to start the series is talking about the own research. Just recently, a research review on metabolic damage by the Bayesian research team was published. I am a part of this team and want to present you our research findings. I'm sure you heard a lot of horror stories about people who are dieting, exercising and can't lose weight. So whom do they blame? Metabolic damage. Well, that's a really good excuse to say, oh, my metabolism is really damaged. I can't lose weight. So we decided to examine if metabolic damage exists. Metabolic damage is permanent metabolic slowing after dieting. So when you start dieting and eating less, your metabolism slows down. Your body doesn't expend so much energy for all the basic tasks you just need for living, like the heartbeat, for example. And the question is, does this metabolic slowing persist after you stop dieting and increase your calories? If it's really the case, it would be really bad because your body doesn't expend so much energy, you start eating and you gain all the weight back again. First of all, we had a look at the Minnesota experiment. The Minnesota experiment was used in the past to support the metabolic damage hypothesis. In this experiment, 32 young, normal weight people were dieting for 24 weeks for half a year with the goal to lose one kilogram per week, which is a lot. Afterwards, they were refed so they can gain the weight back. Previous studies haven't had a look at the entire recovery period. They examined only 12 weeks. We had a look at a longer period, at 20 weeks, and we found no sign of any metabolic damage. Another thing previous research ignored was that the guys were divided into four groups during their recovery period and they got diets of a different energy content. The lowest energy group had just a diet that was in a slight surplus, which means a little bit more energy than they need, and the highest calorie group had more than 1,500 calories more than they actually need to live. The rate of lean body mass gain, or what many consider as muscle gain, was about the same in all the four groups, which kind of makes sense because the dudes didn't even lift. The groups that were in a really high surplus, they gained lots of fat, which really makes sense. In previous research, all the groups were put together into one group and the researchers concluded that there is a disproportionate rate of fat gain, which doesn't make any sense if you look at all the groups separately. The people who ate more than they needed gained more fat. It's super easy. The metabolism recovered in relation to energy intake. So the groups that got more to eat had a faster metabolism recovery. An interesting fact we found out was that the lowest calorie group had a higher metabolism during the recovery period than during the starvation period. Also, their body composition was actually worse than during the starvation period. So the guys didn't fully recover. They still had less muscle mass than during the starvation period, but their metabolism was higher. Why? Because they got more to eat. And here is a very important point, the influence of energy intake on your basal metabolic rate. If you're in a calorie restriction, your body slows down and expends less energy. When you increase your calories and eat more, your body starts expending more energy. But the Minnesota experiment wasn't the only study we looked at. We looked at many different studies, also on malnourished individuals or anorexia nervosa patients. And what we found out was that even in the chronically calorie restricted state, when they were starving, their basal metabolism corresponded to their body composition. Their resting metabolic rate was low, but it was low because their body mass was low. And an interesting point is that in some studies in which anorectic patients were refed, they showed a higher basal metabolism that was expected of them. So they actually wasted the energy. 
As this review was prepared by Bayesian bodybuilding research team, we looked at bodybuilders as well and other weight class athletes. And here we have seen the same thing. During drastic calorie restriction, like preparing for a bodybuilding competition, basal metabolism can slow down. However, after competition, when the athletes started eating more and regaining their weight, their metabolisms went up. Body composition is the most important factor that determines how much energy you expend. Acute changes in energy intake, like eating less or eating more, can increase or decrease your basal metabolic rate. But then, within one to three days after you stop dieting and return to your maintenance energy intake, also your basal metabolic rate increases. As such, the current research doesn't support the metabolic damage hypothesis. If you want to know more, there is a great article on the Bayesian Bodybuilding webpage. I will link it below. Check it out. If you like this video, please share it. The metabolic damage myth should finally die. All the people who think that they are metabolically damaged should know the truth. They should find out what's wrong with their training and diet, why they don't lose weight and stop blaming metabolic damage and start doing the right things and reach their goals. Please share it with them. Please help to distribute this knowledge. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and like the content I put out, just hit the subscribe button below. It would be absolutely amazing. And see you very soon.